Imagine the very first storyteller, maybe a caveman sitting around a campfire. Perhaps the very first communication was not really a story, but just a physical need, like this caveman was hungry, so he rubbed his stomach and he pointed at his mouth and he said, aha, or maybe, aha, I'm not sure exactly uh, how the syllable should be emphasized. In addition to making an idiot of himself, he also might have communicated. He might have let the other cavemen around the campfire know that he was hungry. And why? Because they would look at that, and they look at themselves. They've got two arms, he's got two arms, unless a bear took one off or something. And he looks like they look. And they see him doing things physically, and they think to themselves, if I did those things, what would that mean to me? And they decode his encoding, his symbolism, and they say, well, if I was doing that, that would mean that I was hungry. And they get his message because there's a basic underlying similarity between the two. Later on, we'll talk more about how the story mind works because all of us have the same basic operating system. It's just our experiences that are different. And because we have the same operating system, it forms a carrier wave. And when we communicate, we can see in the story mind that anything that's the same as the operating system, we can pull out and then get the information that was attached to that carrier wave, which is the storytelling mes message. Okay. Now, this caveman communicates that way. After a while, he gets a little more sophisticated, and he's able to do such things as describe a linear series of experiences. Perhaps he wants to describe how to get to a place where there are berries, or how to avoid a place where there are bears. Well, he might say that he went down by the river, and then he went over the hill, okay, and then he found these berries. Perhaps it took him several days to go from one place to another. Sign language. Some sign language is complex, some is a lot easier to understand, but it's usually based on a representation of visual things that you find in the real world. Eventually, he's able to string a number of points together rather than just make a single point like, ah, okay? So, if he puts together a line of logic that says, this happened, and then this happened, and this happened, and there's no breaks in it, and there's no pieces missing, in that case, he's created what we call in Dramatica a tale. That's our definition of a tale, an unbroken linear progression. That's a, a headline because it deals with your logic. But you can also have an unbroken progression of feelings. How he felt at one time, whether he was happy or sad, whether he found something funny, whether he found something disgusting. He could convey this. He might convey those emotions just to express what he went through without even talking about the territory that he covered. There could be a heart line, independent. It might only be a heart line. A tail could just be an emotional progression, or it could just be a logistic progression, or a tail could be a logistic and emotional progression running along side by side, perhaps affecting each other, perhaps not. Let's look at that in a little more depth. We know that the human heart cannot just go from one emotion to another without going through steps in between. There are feelings in between that you have to go through to get from one mood to another mood. Now, if you start with one emotion, you may be able to jump to any one of a number of emotions, and then from any of those, jump to others. But you can't jump to all of them. If you could, then we'd just be bopping about from one feeling to another, and there would be no growth, there would be no emotional development, but we know there is, and that's an indicator that we can't go from any one thing to any other thing, but there is direction to it. You look at Freud's psychosexual stages, you look at the seven stages of grief, you have to go through them in a particular order. You can't skip over any. If you do, there's an emotional misstep. It feels untrue to the heart. And a story that has a character go through and miss a step, skip a step, or jump to another emotion that they couldn't get there from here, that will then feel wanky to the audience. It'll feel like the character stopped developing in a way that they could follow with their own hearts, and it will jump the audience right out and they'll look at the character as being a fabrication rather than someone they identify with. So the idea is to create this linearity, but doesn't that linearity create a formula? Well, it would if you could only go from one emotion to a particular next one to a particular next one and so on. Then there'd only be one path you could take. But as mentioned earlier, from one emotion there are several, not all, but several that you might go to. And when you go to one of those, there are several others you might go to next. Similarly, in points of logic, from a single point, 
there might be any one of a number of things that might happen next that would be kosher to happen with what already happened. But you couldn't have anything happen next because some things would just be impossible to happen if this had happened first. There'd be missing steps or this would preclude that from happening. Now, you can start from any place and eventually get to anywhere else, but you have to go through the in-betweens. So as long as a tale has either a headline or a heartline and it's an unbroken chain that doesn't skip any steps, that constitutes a complete tale. 